My friends, we are but a handful, the few, the minority that are dead and demised on this server. But the balance of power will change with time, my friends. We will become the majority as more and more of the hermits meet their fate and become demised. And another hermit has indeed deceased. Purely through accident, okay? I could take credit for this and say that I built a giant slime magnet in the side of Mumbo's base, but I would be lying. For Jevin flew into the side of Mumbo's base and has met his demise at the hands of his own misfortune. Jevin, welcome to the graveyard and welcome to the dead team. There are now four of us and I have a question for you. Who do you think is going to be next? Who is the next hermit to demise? Let me know what you think. But right now, let's get into what I've got planned for this episode. Well, my friends, in the comments of the previous video, something happened. Yes, that's right. Many of you took issue with my diamond armor, although there was a lot of confusion. Some people talking about diamond armor, some people about OP armor. This right here is not god armor. It's not the one where you have all the cheaty enchantments loaded on. This is my regular diamond armor. And the rules of demise is that you're not allowed to wear god armor. However, things get a little bit fuzzy around when you're dead if you can wear diamond armor or not. So I spoke to Green about it. And he wasn't sure either, so at some point we're going to figure it out. So chances are that we'll probably not be able to wear diamond armor. And also, the Alive team can come after us when we're demised, right? So there may be some traps and tricks heading my way, and I don't want to lose my normal armor. So we're going to do what we did just a few episodes ago we were doing this. We're doing it all over again. We're going to make another set of armor, and I've been fishing through all of my books and finding loads of enchantments that we can use and then I've been buying some from the store over here as well like mending but there are some crucial ones that are not available like unbreaking so I don't have all of the enchantments that I need and I didn't really want to go around poking with someone else's villager trading system impulse I believe is out of town at the moment so I can't get any books but then I remembered he's got these traders down here and apparently right clicking on a villager causes you to eat and yes there are lots of trades available and look at this, an unbreaking free trade down here. That's fantastic. I will say it's a little bit on the pricey side. Then again, these emeralds are dirt cheap for me because I got that crazy emerald farm. I've been pulled into the trading game over here and I swear their levels have changed once they've restocked because I brought a whole bunch of lanterns and this one's level has definitely gone down because I got it about halfway across and then it re needed restocking. Now the ones either side of them... They actually gained a trade, even though I didn't level them up to journeyman. They needed to restock, and then I came back and found out that we got the Riptide enchantment, and over on this side we got glass, and that's still out of stock. Very, very peculiar. Anyways, we're good here for some enchanting. I've got this bow and all of these books for it, and then I've got the pieces of armor and the books that we require. So everything's hooked up, but then I had a really, really cool idea. I am dead, my friends. I have been demised. And do you know what looks kind of ghostly? Chain mail armor. Unfortunately, having ransacked the chests that are in this area, I don't have any right now. But I was using the bone farm earlier, picking some up and basically throwing it away. As you can see, we get leather and gold armor from this. And all I ever do is chuck it away. I also get chain mail as well. So wouldn't it be really cool if we got a bunch of that stuff? And then we can have some ghostly looking armor. To achieve this, I think what we need to do is remove the filter. If I take that out and these out temporarily, then everything is going to filter down into these chests. So after a session of AFKing here, whacking all of the skeletons, then all of the chainmail armor that drops will go down into these chests right here. Ah, uh, here we are again, my friends. The land of screeching, gold, and death. <laughs> the pigment farm. It took me a lot of grinding to get this chainmail armor, but look at it. It's gorgeous and ghostly. And let's see it from behind there, because the head kind of gets cut out at the front, which is actually really cool for showing your skin. Now, let's check out these enchantments quickly. I'm just going to mouse over them. They're very similar to what we had before. And I've also created myself a sword, a bow, and a pick. So if all of this stuff gets lost, I still have my regular armor. 
After all of that skeleton farm grinding, I've had a little bit of an ingenious idea. Well, I say ingenious, um, it's just trading. I kind of remembered you can also get this from villagers as well. And we need an armorer. And if one of these path finds to this block, it'll become an armorer, right? Okay, that's better. I might not have needed to have broken the minecart, but that's okay. If we check out its trade, yeah, look at this. Iron. Iron first, and then we should get some chain mail. Okay, what trades will you unlock? I I've got a feeling there might actually be a couple more iron before we get chain. Oh, no, there it is. And the price is reduced. For what reason, I do not know. So for one emerald. Oh, one emerald, we can get chain mail leggings. All of our villagers here are now armorers, and as you can see, I'm getting all of my diamonds ripped off from me because these ones over here will only trade iron armor first. Look, all I had to do was put the blast furnace here. This one, check it out. One emerald for chain mail boots. That is fantastic. And it had the coal trade. That one's certainly better. Now, this one also had two iron trades, and then I didn't get any chain mail, and I got a feeling the same might happen with this one. Oh, we got chainmail boots. Okay, what are, what are we in need of? Chest plates and a helmet, I think. So this guy is an expert, and we got some cool diamond trades right here, but no more chainmail. However, this one over here I've leveled up, and we've now got the chest plate. And just like that, job done, we got the chainmail helmet over here. That is superb, because otherwise I would have had to have gone and wrangled up some more villagers. And as you know, I don't have my own villager breeder or trading set up everywhere, but we got exactly what I wanted out of these villagers. My friends, I have been inspired because we have so many of these that we could sell them. But there's only one team this is really going to be useful for right now, the dead team who may want to be showing off their glorious dead skins, right? And this has just led me down a path of a really inspiring idea that's going to take us over to the Halloween district, which is essentially going to be where the dead quarters, as many of you have been calling it, will be located. Now, before we head over there, I just have one other thing to show you in this area. And that is another comments moment, okay? Yes, I've done it again. I've been an absolutely fantastic and wonderful derp face. Because for some reason, I brain farted on the existence of quartz stairs and there are actually two types and I've gone for the smooth one here which doesn't have the lines across the ledges and I've replaced the stairs here from durite to quartz which is the whitest stair block and I don't know why I forgot about it. So anyway in the room around the corner is where we needed to build the master office for the idea team and this meant that I needed a whole bunch of gravel so I had to fly far far away to clear out a gravel patch now this is because I needed to mix it with sand to make concrete for the room and I think I filled up four shulker boxes and got through an entire shovel clearing out this area so then I got back to idea and went to work on the shape of this room I tried to make it as big as possible by bringing the walls on the side back a little bit and then I built it up relatively high to the top of where the windows were brought some quartz pillars back across and then installed some iron trapdoors and put lights and blocks on the top of them. And this is what it looked like after. Pretty classy, a fair amount of space to put some details and decorations in. And that's what I thought I'd have a stab at next, trying to make this room real fancy. And so I started off with putting some lights in underneath the carpets at the front and then working on a grand table for us to sit around. Of course, it's got the Swedish flag and I've put in three different colored chairs. Then behind the table, putting in some shelving units, throwing up flags and just throwing in as many details as I could without too much coordination. I'm not going to say what I'm doing here was good. The experience was fun, but I didn't feel like the blocks I used really worked with the white background. And then at the very end, I tried to mix in gold and lapis blocks and maybe create like a centerpiece on the wall. But that didn't really work out. So I tried this, didn't like the look of it, and then I decided to rip it out. So let's check this out from the first person perspective. I've got to say I like this room and that's probably because I decorated it. It's kind of humble. I like that I gave this a shot. Of course, detailing isn't my strength, but here's the thing. It is what idea is all about. And so I think we should consult Corallus or B-dubs, get them in here to bring this up to the idea standard. It is those two that do the detailing work and me giving a shot of it. 
I don't know. Let me know what you think of this room with a comment down below. Anyway, it's time for me to skedaddle out of here. We are going to head over to the Halloween district, which will one day become the home of the Dead Quarters. However, for now, I have a little project in mind that is going to work out just wonderfully in that area. So back here in the Halloween area, which seems to be the home of us who are demised at the moment, I'm thinking there's plenty of space around here. And what we'll do is set up a shop for the dead players only. And then if they want some ghostly armor like I'm wearing here, they'll be able to grab some. And this gives me an opportunity to do some building. And I've been inspired by B00's style of building recently. So I think what we'll do is we'll take Joe Hill's palette that he's got working over here, a fantastic palette, kind of mix it up with a more organic style that you might associate with B00 and build something just over here in this space underneath these trees. So I've cleared them out, that means we've got room to start construction, and like Joe did with this building, we've got a base of cobblestone. Now this is going to be an actual building over here onto the side, and the rest of the building itself will probably be more like a barn. So we've got some dark oak logs that are stripped on the side here, that's probably going to become a part of this building as it's the base, however the way into the building will be from down here where we have more of a barn and an open area. So the logs that go across in Joe's design there are actually spruce logs. So somewhere around here, I think we're going to do that at this height. So working on idea with B-dubs, I've had quite a few chats about his building style and we've gone over how his interiors are often quite small and cramped, but that in itself can be an interesting approach. So over here, we're going to keep this as a small building. I have pushed it back by two blocks in this direction. So it's nine across and I like to work with odd numbers. So we've got nine by five and then this beam right here is nine blocks as well. This might get nudged around a little bit, but this is basically going to be the opening in which to walk from. Now from here, we can start to build the roof out, which is going to be made out of jungle blocks. And we're just basically hashing the shape together for now and then throwing in all the details later on. So the roof will start around here. And as you can see in my inventory, I've also prepared a load of other jungle materials to throw in around it to give it more shape and detail. And I was even wondering if at the very back of this building, yeah, something like this, a little bit unstructured at the moment, but I couldn't help but feel this would look like a good wall at the back of a building. Now I've built up the shape and the size and kind of put in the materials to show you the parameters of the, the different parts like the roof shape over here but one of the things we're really going to do is stray away from evenness and uniformity and actually deform the roofs a lot and deform the building a fair bit so before I start to strip the logs and change out some of the blocks here I thought I'd give you a feel of what it's going to look like if we were to just continue with this clean approach and yes look at that it really is something I mean I've taken Joe's palette over here put together a really sturdy shape that tells the right kind of story and now we're going to start to deform this a little bit and take the even shape out of it but before I do that of course I want to wander around and just show you the windows and the lighting and everything here looking really good to begin with. I can't say too much about this. When you look at another's art you're usually in awe and amazement of it and then when you look at your own you tend to be hypercritical and the feeling I have right now is that of being a little bit of an imposter. You see, I'm not 100% sure exactly what it is I'm doing here. But in order to get good at something, you do have to try. And I think this is a fair effort. And I think I'm going to let all of you be the judge of if this works or not. Personally, I'm cool with it. I like the deform look. And now I've done a bit of that again here on the outside with the cobblestone foundation. However, the area inside where the armory stuff is going to happen, put down this stone brick floor for now and just focusing on small little details here and there that are starting to work. But we really do need to bring a lot more into this area to tell the story that this is where armor gets forged. And with some more goings on on the outside, as you can see here, we've got some pits for holding coal and holding iron. The story is really coming to life here. I just feel like this interior bit maybe isn't quite working at the moment. Am I missing something here? What am I doing wrong? I just don't really feel it click right now. Also, there's a roof on the inside here now, and it's kind of rickety, and I actually think that looks really good. Whenever you look up, it just feels much more natural, and I very much like this style. Okay, it's now time to wrap this project up. And in doing so, I have rebuilt the interiors and expanded this little chimney stack on the outside, which is lacking detail. I ran out of mossy cobblestone. I'll come back and make that look better at a later time. 
The inside of the shop is now many times better. You know what I did before? I just threw a load of detail blocks into the room and they didn't tell a story. This time though, we got two different types of furnace set up here for smelting with little details on the ground. We've got these tracks to bring the materials in. Everything is telling a story. There are tools on the tool racks. There is armor in processing and machinery to operate its storage for all the different materials and it just looks fantastic. Now this chainmail armor piece at the front is to grab your attention. There is a sign saying for ghostly dead armor head up the stairs. Here it says only for the dead. Admittedly, I got a little bit lazy with the shot up here. It's just shulker boxes. But look at this, 32 rotted flesh for one chainmail. That will be the currency of the dead. I have had a craving for rotted flesh, and so I'm going to trade with my other dead hermits for this. So, 32 pieces for one item. Now, I wanted to wrap up my activities in the graveyard and head back over to Idea, but I've been inspired, and around this area now, I'm starting to think it'd be a good idea to maybe get a few more of these buildings and provide more shops for the dead hermits. You see, everyone wants to see you make traps, right? And I've got a couple of traps up my sleeve. But we could also work on getting the things that you need to make traps to our other dead hermits. Pretty cool idea, right? And with that, we could take this really cool build palette that I think's been a success and extend it over into this area. So I've worked on this shape over here a little bit more. It kind of looks like a bit of a mess, but it's all right. And I've filled in what used to be water around here and put down some markers for where I might be building some more shops in the near future. So earlier I said that we'd be back at Idea to meet up with a certain person and hello hey. there you are good friend. Hi. Hi. You seem tense hey. on edge. Yeah. Nervous. Well, yeah. 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 Uh, two times in a week. Hey want to meet up? I'm on the other team. Don't print the sword out. Please no sword. Stop it. Beat up. Stop! Don't chase! Stop! We what? have a plan to win a competition. Where are your totems, good sir? Oh, right, right. Whoops. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, I may have left them. I may. <laughs> Whoops. I may have left them at my other house. I'm, I'm so sorry. My head. But... <laughs> <sighs> okay. You should have honestly two totems in either hand at all times. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. Well, be at ease, my friend, because we're in this together. Okay. okay? Dead okay, or alive. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, okay, good. Ooh. Yeah, this is our master office room, okay? Okay. Now, let uh, me tell you about it. I kind of just okay. came in here and threw down blocks that I knew looked good for detail. Bookshelves. Yes. Tables yes, and yes. chairs. It's all wooden, though. Yes. And everything else is, like, uh -huh. clean, pristine white. And I just feel like it's it's good. It's passable, but it's not, yes. not particularly, you know, on your level. Yours or Kralis' level, right? Oh, stop it. No, this is great. This is great. They, they, a lot of times, you, people are scared to do wooden stuff in a clean area, right? This That's is very true, clean yeah. area. You want wood for contrast. I think it's very nice. I like oh. it a lot. We have done a little bit of work just finalizing this room. And mm -hmm. I, I'm really liking this. We've kind of created a centerpiece out of this space up here. Yeah. I'm chuffed to bits. Do, do you do you appreciate that British terminology I just used for you? What was that? <laughs> chuffed, chuffed. I'm chuffed oh, to bits. Oh, I'm so used to hearing it. It just it just kind of you know, it felt completely. I've never normal. said it before. It felt really cool. I awesome. think I'm gonna start using that more. Yeah, but this looks nice. I had an idea for the gold thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what what about whoever does the best business for the month? Gets their head put in there. That's a great idea. That's motivation, yeah. incentive. Yeah, and a reward. Yes. Nice. And then whoever does the worst gets to go over here in the corner of shame. <laughs> yeah, the corner of shame. I like head that. Down. <laughs> head down. That's hilarious. I didn't make any sales this month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great uh, idea. So there we have it, my friends. Approval from B Dubs. Tweaks and changes to take it to the next level, and that is our idea office room complete. And I absolutely love the look of it. And that was kind of weird going through that flower. <laughs> and I was back over at the shopping area picking up some bits and bobs, bumped into Ren in the Never, and it looks like we might have ourselves a customer in the near future. And I'm all over the place at the moment, running around, sorting out materials for building and whatnot. 
I'd really like to know though, what do you think of setting up a shopping area just for the dead hermits, right? <laughs> I think it's a terrific idea and in the next episode we're going to do more of that and some other shenanigans as well. But that's it for me this one. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like. As always, thank you for your support and I'll be seeing you soon with another demised episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.